What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of uh, the Golden Rule podcast with me Yanto Sani and I'm Noor. And by the way, we have a special guest, very very special that is really close to our hearts. <laughs> It's really close. Uh, yeah, our homeboy all the way from Juta, Mr. ET from Panic Room, guy. What's up? Yeah. Thank you for having me, guys. It's yeah. a pleasure. Yeah, it's an honor having Mr. Champ. Yeah, yeah. Champion. ET here is uh, the champion of Legends of Barbers 2023. For you guys, for your information. Yeah, for you, uh, barbers out there. I'm caught in between of two champion <laughs> Southeast Asia uh, Legend of Barbers. No, I know. I, I I passed my crown to ET oh, last year. So. But still, both of you are champion. Like, you you yourself is a champion from Russia, dude. Oh, that one uh, uh, outdated already. Nah, nah. <laughs> then same goes to me. He's only champ now. It's just a shame we won't have a Legend of Barbers this year. Oh, oh shit. yeah, this year don't have a. Uh? Yeah. What if another year, but another Singapore? <laughs> Would that cause a stir up? Yeah. What if, do you think? He got another Legend of Barbers competition, and the Singapore winner. I don't know how it's gonna be like. Like Mati, gonna, bro. Mat- okay. For all the Singapore Barbers out there, uh, you gotta make it three for three. <laughs> <laughs> so when when you won, like okay, like tell tell us more about how's life being a a, a champ a champ after winning. The biggest bar battle in Southeast Asia. I would say like things have taken a turn. A lot of new developments. There's a lot of traveling, teaching. It's a different lifestyle. I think uh, you're also an educator right now. Yeah, mm. just just getting started. Just right. Congrats, started. man! Thank you. Following your footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> But yeah. Be uh, better. Be better than me. I I would say that um, I think as a barber, on a day to day basis, like. A lot of our job scope is restricted to behind the chair, mm-hmm. but then when you start traveling and you're being exposed to so many different cultures and countries, mm-hmm. and there's a schedule to follow. You're traveling here next week. You're in the US, and then come back next month. Okay, Jack calls you. Okay, yeah, next month Philippines, ah, huh? Philippines, and then it's 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 definitely different from what we go through mm-hmm. behind the chair, just cutting hair for clients. But it's also an experience that I would say is uh, very enriching and uh, definitely develops you a lot. It's very different, but I'm having fun. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. How about your uh, your peers, like uh, your 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 friends of barbering in, in the, Singapore? In the industry in Singapore. Like like how how do they respond to it? Like, hey, bro, gila, sell you champion now? Yeah, you congrats, traveling? bro. Like, like, yeah. is, how's is, the response? Yeah, how's the response? I think, especially coming from someone who just. Like, never like had a background of going battles in for competition barber battles. Yeah, Legend of Barbers was my first time uh, entering a competition for hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, first time cutting on stage mm-hmm. and with like the pressure from the crowd and the judges and everything. But um, I'm very thankful to have like uh, colleagues and even clients, friends, people that. Sometimes I don't even know them, you know. They they book a haircut and they ask me, "Oh, you won, you won some kind of award, right?" Yeah. It's like, it it's a uh, it's a different feeling, but uh, it's nice to know that uh, the people recognize and they 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 appreciate the the effort that that went into to being able to like achieve something like that. I think it really means a lot to me, and I wouldn't be anywhere without any of them. Yeah, true, nice. So do you flex your trophies in the shop? Like <laughs> you frame fuck. it? Do, do you frame your trophies? I, I put it on the the top shelf. So yeah. it's like, you know, if you're not looking up, you won't see it. Oh. It's not in like plain sight. Okay. I feel like to be honest, if if I put it like right shy, like, right, shy, right in front of my <laughs> station, it's like Overwhelming. Some, uh, no, I get I get only if a client comes to me and then I put a trophy right there, right? I get two different responses. One is where uh They'll be like, "Oh, you're a champion. You won this award. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, I trust you. Do whatever you want. Mm. That's what I like to hear." Uh-huh. Yeah. But then maybe sometimes you know when people see that kind of uh, that kind of accolade that that you have under you, and then the expectations that they have becomes it's a higher. lot. It's a lot higher. So and the pressure is there. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. when when you're in the shop working in envi- in shop environments, things are not in your control. You know, sometimes you snowball. Somebody comes in late. Uh, you're always working with a time frame, and maybe with too many expectations, it's hard to deliver sometimes. So it definitely puts the pressure on me. Mm-hmm. But 
it's uh, it's fun. Yeah. I, I try to enjoy every day as it goes but, by. But, but for no different though, this guy is like straight in the face and you sit down he got like all these multi you will awards. see shit yeah. <laughs> you will see all these multi awards on the like trophy on the like right in front of the chairs and the customer just can't help it to like oh that's a lot of trophy bro <laughs> I mean if I if I was sitting in all shit I'd be like yeah I think I'm in I think I'm in good hands yeah I mean I'm I'm oh. trying to flex <laughs> flex it I mean uh, like for no I think you, you you're super proud of your achievement yeah right? yeah I mean like of course I am I mean like being a barber for like after like what eight years then I achieved something from my first competition which is the golden seasons in 2019 mm-hmm. then after that it was the um, wall legends of barber mm-hmm. that was another achievement but then that wasn't the only achievement I mean like for me, I have a lot of achievements and highlights in my career where we do get to travel. Remember, like, oh, we awesome. went to Europe, oh, yeah, man. Italy, oh, best. London, you know? Oh, shock, huh? oh, like, we get to Koya, travel. Bro, Koya. Yeah, we get to travel, <laughs> but the wallet kosong, bro. Koya, Koya, bro. I mean, like, my, my company, we, we yeah. sponsored the guys. Like, we wanted everyone to experience something huge being yeah, a bubble. Like, to experience that. Being a barber is not only behind the chair. Yeah, right? something that's it's beyond just beyond cutting hair. Just cutting yeah. hair. So that's where Yanto takes me and some of the boys over abroad, like Jakarta or wherever, like Europe. It's that, to me, is the biggest achievement apart from the accolades. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We were talking about the Europe trip, like, uh, uh, I know, I can't I can't it, yeah. yeah. We really push the boundaries to like bring Southeast Asia on the map of barbering yeah. and we met a lot of amazing barbers like Julius Caesar and Vince the Barber yeah. everyone now still friends with them and and, and now Southeast Asia is like we have like this barber expo com- coming up I think on September September, September, September 1819 barber yeah. expo yes. in KL happening yeah, we have uh, Alan Big uh, coming down and who else will be coming down? Josh um, O.P. Josh O.P. Josh O.P. Josh O.P. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to uh, Mr. Fidawas we are uh, promoting Retro your <laughs> <laughs> promoting your uh, Barber Expo now okay? For free bro yeah. We gila babi bro yeah. Gita gila babi <laughs> <laughs> And also okay. there's a Like a, a Barber Olympic there's, yeah, a, there's, there's a lot of competitions There's five competitions right Barber Olympic There's yeah. WBC wow. uh, Shack there's haircut competition A few yeah. yeah So I mean like For barbers out there If you want to Gain experience Expose yourself Please do Please do join yeah, but, but I think There's one problem Also as a barber Where if you're Working with another company Right If you want to join All this you, Do you need to ask Your boss To like Hey can I Enter this competition uh, Or you just enter what, what is the right thing To do For me This is not me I'm not the guest <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, should. I mean oh, your boss is right there beside you right? Yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm not the guest Because we have this kind of uh, unsaid, like, I mean, un- unsaid situation Where I guess in Singapore especially Yeah macam like, you know like macam like, Those those bubble like oh I want to join But my bub- my boss Won't allow Don't allow me to join Because I have to take leave and There's not enough manpower not enough or whatever manpower. All these excuses lah Like what we got from Fidaos Like telling like They can't get uh, uh, Enough uh, Enough entries from Singapore Or even Even Wall Legend of Bubbles as well Like we have Jack Or the, the people from Wall Telling us like There's a lot of Bubbles want to join But Because they're working with a company And yeah. the company Don't want to send them To the competitions So it It, it makes Makes it harder Like harder. I, I don't know whether it's harder or not But then what's your take what's on selfish that? selfish yeah Yeah, <laughs> yeah fuck uh, For me I'm ready for it I'm, I'm ready for it If if he's ready to open his own shop He's gonna travel Like it's good for him man. Like, as, as a barbershop owner Like if you guys Listening right now And your boys yeah. Really wanna go outside Don't stop just, them uh, Rather than just behind the chair So for you E.T. I, I, I'm surprised like Panic Room Sent someone to the Like Competition and, and someone young And how old are you again? <laughs> I'm uh, 24 this year Wow 24 this year Oh, darah muda ya yeah. Oh, you, we are at the same age, I think 24 years Nah, betul lah Age There's no such things back then Yeah There's no such thing as a like, competition Bubble competition like this Like, there is but like not, 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 not on that kind of scale mm. This is what I think uh, What Wall did was really something that uh, I mean, they brought eight 
countries like across Southeast Asia on one like big stage, like the stakes were really high. And mm-hmm. I think everyone could feel it. But I think to, to answer your question, um, I feel like the, the, with regard to business owners and sending their staff for competitions like that, um, one for, for one, I'm very grateful for my bosses for giving me the chance to not, not they were very supportive and they, they didn't shoot it down at all in fact they they kind of told me to just have, enjoy the process and, and have fun and maybe don't be too hard on yourself because mm-hmm. maybe sometimes I, I tend to overthink a lot and I tend to obsess over like what if the what if this, yeah so you're creating more pressures yeah, on yourself exactly and they told me you know what at the end of the day like they chose you to, 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 to represent Singapore right so you should just do it and have, and, and, and enjoy the process mm-hmm. and um in hindsight, after going through the competition, I feel that I understand that in, in, in our country, in Singapore, like the stakes are very high. It's a very competitive landscape. Yeah. The rentals are high, yeah, overheads man, are high. <laughs> Every dollar and cent counts as, mm-hmm. a, as a business owner. And I, I understand that. But I think after entering and going through the competition, I kind of felt that there are certain moments and experiences where um, money can't really buy and yeah, I, agree. I think having the chance to take part on a stage like that alone win mm-hmm. or lose doesn't matter just being able to represent your country to fight it out on a stage like that I think that is an experience that really you, you can't buy it how was your feeling how was the experience being up on a stage how do you feel I mean, you guys saw me backstage. I was just walking back. I was like, uh, I was plugged in. Dude, he's pacing around. He's pacing I, I, was, around. I was plugged in. No, noise cancelling earphones, just walking around. I think I was listening to like uh, 8 Mile. The Eminem soundtrack. Oh. I thought it was Taylor Swift. On loop. I think on repeat. <laughs> 8 Mile on loop. Uh. Yeah, on loop. I was just walking around. Ooh, Literally. Slim shady. Oh, arms were already sweaty. Haven't gone on stage yet. I honestly, uh, yeah, I was uh, scared shitless. I thought I was gonna piss myself on stage. Yeah, because still, the, because I, the stage is it was it was it was, it was it was humongous, man. <laughs> and I and I remember like a minute before we went in, like all of the contestants were gathered like outside the the door, right? And I was like, okay, I really I really need to pee. I really need to pee. Mm-hmm. I'm like, now I need to pee now. And then I I dropped my tool bag on the floor, and then I just like ran to the toilet. <laughs> and then I was kind of afraid that you know when I came back, they called my name, but I haven't show up. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, but like I, I I made I made it just on time and then, yeah, the rest was history. In fact, everyone was like I think was nervous. Yeah, as everyone, right? was, yeah, everyone, yeah, everyone was, was like we can see, because, not all bubbles are like a competition bubble bubble right like, some bubbles are just like very comfortable behind the chair mm-hmm. cutting hair the kind of daily routine stuff and to represent the country is like a huge pressure. Yeah, so I, I definitely True. understand your. But for me, on I mean, like you yourself experienced it in Russia. How, how was it? Uh, <laughs> back, <laughs> back to you, back at you. Aku lagi. Yeah, uh, back at you. Oh, that was way back, man. Like I, 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 I can't remember much, but I remember teaming up, teaming up with Chief Barber Supply from Indonesia. Shout do, out to Chief. Yeah, do, do, those guys uh, was one of the reason why I was in Russia. So. They have a booth there promoting their uh, bubble supplies and permits and stuff. So they want to collab with a bubble. So they called me up and you want to sign up. There's another competition. You can use our products as well. Blah blah blah. They want to promote their 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 hair products lah. So I like okay. Let's let's fly over there. You you you, you can take care of me right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 don't really. We handle everything. Let's submit first. If you got nom- nominated to 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 become the finalist, then we the the next step lah, and and buy all the the flights and stuff like that. So I was nominated and nice. I, I flew there. And honestly, the Bubble Russia Expo is like. It's like a circus like. There's like fire twirlers going on And like like, like some spinning girls I don't know how to say It's not a strip It's not a, a pole bar uh, Like pole dancing It's like those uh, hook up with spears Oh fuck oh, So wow. it's like a wild circus Wow now. So it's like Wow so many So many things going on mm-hmm. I wasn't focused on my <laughs> Competition actually I was enjoying it as a tourist <laughs> So when when, when when I just It's about time to To, to 
to compete right mm-hmm. I was just having fun actually honestly I was just having fun and I was honestly I was lucky lah I think I was lucky to get a very good model nice shape and I just bash and and the judge was like Donny Holly lah wow. uh, Julius Caesar, Julius Caesar, right? Caesar wow. uh, Bert Mina the pressure the pressure was there but at the same time I was like I know I'm not gonna win I'm surrounded by all these European barbers so I was like really having fun lah but, and then, I, but then my question is to you mm. during the announcement of the result where were you? <laughs> because I was oh, watching live oh, 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 I was I was having were, my reservist They were oh. serving my reservist So I was watching live And I was like Oh the winner is Yang Chung Yang Chung They took They took at least Five to six minutes To just figure out Where am I I was actually Ordering hot dogs <laughs> <laughs> Hungry uh, ah yeah, no, uh, Go competition I was freaking, I was freaking hungry lah. Like, Confirm never win one lah. See my lah. Let one uh, uh, Go buy, buy hot dog first lah. They were like, eh, hey, yanto, yanto. That's where, like, oh, shit, it was, it was nerve wracking, lah. Like, hey, really, yeah, like, surreal, lah. Like, what's up? Yeah. Did Singapore Southeast Asia just won yeah, this? Yeah, bro. That fast food competition. I think you put a, a, a mark in Southeast Asia's barbering industry, where you're the first guy that compete outside of Asia to be in Russia, winning that competition. It inspires me to be honest thank you thank you so much yeah. Yeah, thank you i was <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but uh, honestly like there's a huge impact in indonesia and malaysia when travel uh, they all like macam eh hey, oh no southeast asia man like the yeah wow shocks are uh, the feeling uh, like macam and and till now uh, i still believe uh, southeast asia barbers are still the best barbers period like you can idolize like George Lamonoka and all these. You can idolize George, a oh, lot of barbers out there George, from the states, yeah, from the, the UK. States. But I believe uh, Southeast Asia, like Vietnam barbers, bro, Vietnamese barbers, bro, uh, Philippine barbers, Thailand barbers uh, are crazy. Uh, and we Asian barbers cut Asian hair day <laughs> in day out. And you, as a barber, you yourself know how we, tough we, it is we, cutting Asian hair. We, I think all of us know the the, the nightmares that we can get if we get a specific type of like the coarse Asian hair I think in Malaysia they call it the pachak hair <laughs> yeah for <laughs> us uh, in Singapore Malay we call it chengar chengar right? chengar yeah. 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 so like yeah but we can, we can add that like a lot true a lot so when I was there like we just do our things like, like for us cutting European hair is like ooh, it's a dream butter <laughs> yeah true right. it's, it, you enjoy cutting it rather than not saying we don't enjoy cutting Asian hair It's just that they are gifted to have more nicer sh- head shape More, more, more softer hair, softer hair like Their textures are and also when different you, when, you, when you blend it, it's like oh, Buttery so when, you, when you style it, it listens to you yeah. It listens to you, yeah So like, I believe like If I can do it, uh, all other Southeast Asia where I think there's Really, a lot of badass barbers in Southeast mm-hmm. Asia. If they go Europe, uh, wow, it's a walk in the park, man, for them yeah. to cut Italian hair or or uh, UK, UK, or any any kind of guys outside of Asia. Uh, and they, and they are like, what's naturally, uh, like, much um, all model, no? They are good looking, <laughs> like, good good facial right? features, yeah. good yeah. proportions. Like like everyone can become models, uh, Like for us, uh, Want to shoot content also have to figure out like which more <laughs> which customer yeah, which clients have to scout yeah, yeah. Have to find them so much like that fair gitu, eh? true no, true but yeah so, no, stop talking about <sighs> me man yeah. right now we have our guest bro yeah we true. have our, uh, we have our the, Mr Cham yeah the the prodigy man at twenty four years old He's still young uh now an educator traveling all over uh, Southeast Asia like let's talk about it man like, what yeah, else. Man. Other than other than the topic about uh, uh, bosses in 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 Singapore or other countries doesn't yeah. allow their well, barbers to join competition. Yeah, true. Okay, before that, I I really want to ask you this question. Since you won that competition, what was the outcome? What was the response from other barbers? Yeah, the community. Yeah. Not 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 in in your shop. Yeah, the other but community. The, the, other community in the in Singapore. Yeah, Singapore. What was the response? Yeah, the the not friend one lah. Like, <laughs> like you don't know anyone or whatever you know. Yeah. 
I mean, to an extent, I would say like, yeah, I, I think there was a bit of traction and more people started to follow me. I feel like people started to, I started to hear my name a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, on top of that, there was also a, a group of barbers that I, maybe ex-colleagues or people that I, I, I work with that they were very supportive and they, they were actually, they were watching live wow. like on stream and then I was like, wow, I wasn't like watching as, uh, Singapore versus uh, Thailand like that, yeah. <laughs> Singapore versus Batman. They want GG, GG. Kau jangan macam-macam. Singapore versus Batman. So yeah, I mean, like you had, you you get all this response when you came back to Singapore, is it? Or yeah. well, after after the announcement, like the DMs was like crazy. Or I think within like might not sound like a lot, but maybe within a day or two of winning, I think I got like. 200 followers Ooh, so straight straight away. Away. Instagram yeah. very hard to get followers now yeah. right? so getting 200 within like 24 to 48 hours is a big yeah, deal I mean yeah. like, like like you said like Instagram is pretty hard to get um, followers nowadays so for you people out there do follow Mr. E.T. Yeah, E.T. Man. can you tell them like what's your Instagram handle man uh, it's uh, E.T. dot etched mm. on what, Instagram how do you spell that <laughs> E.T. <laughs> dot e t c h e d okay i mean we will leave that okay handle come, somewhere come, somehow come back before uh, i'm gonna have like i need to address this again so when when indonesian won second right eh? third second, second. Indonesia second. Was second. Indonesia was second indonesia was second you know what happened uh, in indonesia the freaking minister did a like a press conference on his own hey you know that was mine oh that was yours that was mine oh yeah yeah he, uh, he he got third, third. mayor in his state fucking oh bro announcement, announcement on, on news, TV bro. on news next like, day come out newspaper all yeah like, like, bro, congratulations TV, bro. Oh, wow. Indonesia just uh, that are we grabbing third yeah. you know like, and it's third bro, it's third, third bro. Place, yeah. and uh, he get that kind of response yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know? even Thailand the news coverage like everyone is like celebrating because of uh, representing the country yeah, but and it's sad to say it's uh, not happening sorry to us. Sorry to say, us. if Singaporeans are watching this episode, uh, I just gonna say like, uh, it's fucked up where when both of these guys like Et and Damahum won Legend of Barber, who which is the biggest ball battle in Southeast Asia, and I think it's there's lack of response on on on. I don't say media. But at least I mean like Okay not no. media But what saddens me the most Was the industry Yeah the industry Macam, Bro, macam uh, There's no uh, there's Celebration no, Yeah Like to be honest with you When I won The people That congratulate me The most Like were happy for me The most was From Malaysia and Indonesia bro Wow Yeah Same yeah. goes to me man actually Yeah Right Like macam What's going on What's going on, what's like, going on what? in this industry What's, what, what's, what's your take like, what's your On take? this <laughs> Like the industry in Singapore Oh, spicy! Hey, come yeah, on, fuck! <laughs> come on, man! Like, what's going on in Singapore where just why lack, lack of support for local talents? Is it is it Singapore? Oh, yeah. <laughs> is, is it Singapore, Singapore is Singapore? the problem? Or is it? I, I think maybe you could say that Singaporeans in general maybe we are a little bit more self centered to an extent. I think uh, in 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 our industry, I think everyone likes to stay in, in their own lane. Like, I, I maybe we wouldn't go out of our way to connect with other barbers mm -hmm. or our peers in the industry, and but why? Yeah, I do you know why? It, it, it doesn't have to be that way, but yeah, it is something that I feel like. I think people just tend to stay in their own lanes in Singapore. Maybe it's a so. So what can we do to get? The community in Singapore to do something together, yeah. man. Like right now, we are the only country, Asian, Southeast Asian country has no spot, like, like no gathering, no yeah. activity, no expo, not even a, like I don't know. Like I mean, like not to say that Singaporeans doesn't have barbers, we have fuckloads of barbers, bro. Banyak like, Especially so good now, one there's one. home based barbers, mm. people who are traveling like door to doors, offering the services. What's your take on that also? I mean, like, everything is... What's your take? 
home base barbers oof home base bula yeah i mean like to, <laughs> to, i mean like yeah home base, home base barbers home base lagi kacau ah <laughs> yeah dia dia yeah barber station, station at like corridor the, charging the, at like correct. really really really, really price. affordable price and and they they have really good haircuts as well yeah so macam how we have so much barbers out there but we barbers in singapore is like really top notch you know actually yeah But like even like House of Baskerville when when they started when I was in House of Baskerville, wow, kita macam rock stars. Ah. People travel all around the world, come to to House of Baskerville and line up just to take picture with us and get a haircut with us. That like we were the ones who started, uh, like House of Baskerville, like Pharaohs. Shout out to Pharaohs. Were the ones who started all this. Macam it was back in 2007 where the first. This first kind of style of proper barber shop, mm-hmm. proper barber shop, tra- traditional barber shop with a tattoo shop. And like, sadly, like after the grown of all these barbers, the macam like mushroom really, but we still don't have this uh, in, like proper uh, unity. I would say. Uh, I think it's a connection. I think connection. it's a connection. Yeah. I think it's a country too small, lah. Everyone country is too small. Maybe the shops are very too close, close to each other. Like insecurity. Like I, I like I compete. You compete me. You steal my bubble. Eh, you steal my client. I steal your client. You steal my bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> my poach, poach other people's stuff. So I think, it's, it, how how do we how do we tackle that? How do we tackle that? Man? Like as a Singaporean, I jealous. I see Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, Philippines, uh, Hong Kong now Taiwan. Like, like, they are like, wow, so the industry is like booming and and so rich and beautiful to see. Like, like, they are togetherness, you know. There's they they have their side of yeah, stories as well. But of course, but they still have that unity between that industry. Yeah. But what's going on in Singapore? So. I I really know, man. I I need someone from the audience to. If you guys are listening, if you have an idea, yeah. And what can we do? What can we do to make us everyone happy and yeah. and I don't know more, something more to more bonded, more bonded, yeah, more bonded. True. especially bubble owners lah, bubble owner, bubble shop owners lah, bubble shop owners lah have this. You don't mix around with these guys. You don't mix around with this that that that, yeah. that bubble shop. So I think because of this kind of culture, it restrict everyone to get together, like they. I saw like Bodega did a uh, look and learn like wow, I, I like wow, shook sia like they have their set of barbers collectively joining to just uh, look and learn and share mm-hmm. each other. Bodega with who JWFTR yeah, or JWFTR. something yeah. yeah all these amazing barbers are like wow don't it it it's already the industry is there is there there's is there. so much barber shop young crazy bagus yeah. now like but where are we As a country, we don't have that yet. Uh, we as Singapore, we don't see that much, lah. Like. It's sad, lah. Like. I'm, I'm really hoping for the best for future, especially Et. He's 24 right now. The baton yeah. is yours. I have passed to you. I pension already. I'm gonna retire soon. He's a retired barber. So I hope Et have answers to this and yeah, keep I mean like. It's being now. It's actually being passed on to the new generation of barbers, like on social medias and stuff. I think it's their time to create this industry, to have that togetherness instead. You know. Yeah, man, it maybe is. I don't know. I, I think we just need to hang out more, or hang out more often. Yeah, I think we should organize barbecue more. Like. Barbecue, uh, at least free food. To, to uh. chat, come, come. We yeah. order satay. Yeah, you can come to my space. So I, th- I think <laughs> I should start something. Ah. Uh. I need to find sponsors. Is sponsors out there? If you guys love our bubble community, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please you support us, our bubble community. Let's let's, let's get together and and, and yeah. try to try to make something out of a. Uh, let's just have fun. Yeah, yeah just just, have just, fun, just, man. just a, a gathering session. I There's mean, no need for a competition. We, we we cut so much hair every day. Like it's not. Yeah. I, I don't even when when I don't even see like nor that often. But I don't go up there and like nor how many haircuts did you do yesterday? Yeah, yeah, we don't do that. <laughs> I mean, like <laughs> you got people ask like that. Uh? Really? No, yeah. not really. But I mean, sometimes it's uh, some people are comp- more competitive than, yeah. than others. Mm, yeah. But like, True. I think uh, work is work, and outside of work, that's where the balance has to come in. If not, I think not just barbers, but I think in general, people as a whole, if if we are that hard headed, we're gonna get jaded really, really quickly. And I, I, I'm, I'm sure, like in this day and age, everybody knows how easy it is to get jaded. 
I mean, take barbering for an example. It's something that you do on repeat every day, right? Like mm-hmm. maybe you take somewhere between ten to twenty clients every day. Oh, well, you do, ah. Uh, uh, Who I, I do. I, I no. I say <laughs> most people do between ten to twenty. I do about eleven, twelve. I, I was just telling like some of my my barber friends in in KL. I think I come here. We come here a fair bit for mm-hmm. work. I, I'm here and there. I have a lot of friends. I have friends who own shops in KL. Mm-hmm. And like every time there's a workshop, event, a course, expo last year, and then not just myself. I think I speak for even other barbers coming from abroad. Even gum from Philippines. Um, whenever people come to KL. They always feel like, wow, everyone really loves each other here, yeah. Wow. yeah. And then I, I, I feel a little bit like, I, I, I feel the love in Malaysia as well. And but then when you reach back home, like, just work. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> just work. I think Singapore just It's work, just work, not. Work, the, it's yeah. just not the same. And yeah. like, yeah, I think maybe the culture. The, it comes down to the little things, you know. Like maybe even down to. If you're in an area where there's a lot of barbers, like say hi to each other, you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Grab a coffee together. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Maybe if you bump into each other at the mama, say hi lah. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. There's no need to. I saw a few barbers ah. Uh. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, I, I used to too. I eye mean. contact already uh, and just Stop. walk off like, macam eh. I mean, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not asking not. you to like sit down and eat your, yeah. eat your meal. Yeah. Right? Hey, what's like, up, just, just how's yeah. your day? Yeah. Be busy yeah. or not? See you soon, you know. Yeah. As, as just this, this simple act. The, I think it's the little things that add up. That 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 will be the very first step. Yeah, I think I, from okay, that guys, point Okay, now we have a solution already. <laughs> Starting from now onwards, if you all bubbles, Singaporean bubbles out there right now listening, uh, let's start saying hi when we meet outside. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just hi with you. Yeah, just hi. Hi, eh? hi. Yeah. How are you? Selamat pagi. Let's start with that first, lah. Yeah. Eh? And see what happens. Okay, guys. By the way, usually we end our episode with a, a question for our guests. So, we're going to wrap up this episode. Iti, what's the yes. golden rule Ooh. in life for you? Ooh, that is a, that's a big question. <laughs> the golden rule of life. I mean, I, okay, to be fair, I think you can. I can only answer this like from my point of view at this point of time because I'm pretty sure like everyone's perception of life and their priorities changes with age. Like, for example, me at, in my early to mid-twenties versus me in my forties, I have a completely different alignment and different set of priorities of what I would find like important to me. But I think uh, at this point of time, I feel like my golden rule in life would be to experience as many things as possible. Um, don't waste the time that you have while well, you have you're young you're, you're still in good shape you're fit you have the energy mm. I think for myself personally I want to really explore and I don't want to enter my 30s with any regrets I don't want to feel like you know I should have tried this when I was younger but now I'm too old and then maybe you know by that point 10-20 years I have kids I have a family and then it's a different set of alignment lah. So at this point of time, yeah, I would say, and, and yeah, if any barber around my age group or younger is looking for perspective, I would say don't restrict yourself. Um, try and explore whatever you can. If, a, if mm-hmm. an opportunity comes, even though it might be daunting, like taking part in a battle, putting yourself out there for people to see, I would say be daring. Showcase yourself. Don't be afraid about how people perceive you at the end of the day it's a learning process right yeah. in life uh, don't waste the chances that come your way because I almost didn't take part in Legend of Barbers almost but I did anyways and I mean look the rest is history damn that's, that's nice that's nice of you Iti thank you so much for thank you for having me yeah it's to go wake up early tomorrow we have class <laughs> yeah. tomorrow okay. it's 4am now so. <laughs> okay guys good night and thank you for thank listening you. see you see you soon bye bye